It is day four in our trial, and it is actually time for the big reveal with our wheatgrass. So uh, sticking with what our usual process would be, uh, this top tray is coming off, and that is going to go uh, into juicing. So when I have had a sufficient amount of coffee this morning, I will do my wheatgrass juicing. We remove the weight, and lift up our cover tray. So this here is officially Urban Micro's first uh, tray of wheatgrass grown in on a fiber mat. So taking a look at things, and I'm going to move you in a little closer here to get a look, and I will do a deeper look at things here. So I'm really happy with how germination looks here. Now, the growth is a little further behind than I'd like. This should be taller by this point. And I talked about this before for this trial is I've got my paper pot tray here. I've got my mat my or my bottom tray here. And then our heat mat is below here. Now, this is not allowing a lot of heat transfer up. So what I am going to do for my next trial is actually put the heat mat in here. Now, not something I really want to do because that is the area where, you know, we, we put water. But because we're not going to have any pooling water in there for the germination process, uh, I think that'll be okay. And as I've talked about in the past, the, the most important part of the growing cycle is the germination stage. And if germination isn't great, the, the crop usually doesn't recover. But if we get really, really good germination, the crop is usually fine, uh, even if the conditions afterwards are adverse. So my priority here would be having the heat mat under there to get really good germination. And, and probably I should have had this growth yesterday, so a whole day earlier. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to have a good crop. But because I'm stacking and just taking a quick look at our sunflower there, which is still stacked, it's really important that I have the proper crop cycle because if that wheatgrass that I had on top wasn't quite ready, then what am I going to do when this needs to get uncovered? So it becomes a space issue. So that timing is really important in the heat mat make sure we do that. So I need to make sure I'm consistent here with the trial. So I'm really happy with this. Germination looks good. There's a, some issues in here. Um, I don't know if this is a water issue. Um, it could be also with the seed. So I'm not, uh, not going to stress out about that because it's consistent with other trays of wheatgrass that I'm growing at the moment. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this to the sink for a watering and just take a look at it. I'm going to lift up this mat and take a look. And so we, get, we can do that together and start getting a sense of how things are growing on this mat. Okay, so what I'm going to start out with here is doing a little compare, not even a comparison. Um, I want to point out a characteristic of root growth that I've thought about and noticed, but I've not really talked about. And this is something I've been thinking about in the back of my head during this trial so far and haven't talked about. So let's take a look at that. So you may kind of think about roots growing into and spreading through the soil which to a degree they do. But what I want to show you here with this wheatgrass tray, which is my regular soil grown tray, is what happens really is the roots grow straight down through the soil. When they hit this, they start growing sideways. So you can see here, there's not a lot of root growth in this upper part of soil. All the root growth, and you've noticed this for sure in your own system, is below here. So the roots tend to want to go down and when they hit a barrier, they go sideways. So we can see that happening a little earlier, but it's not happening. Like this soil here is still very much like it is in its natural, in its like before it was empty, it, it actually falls off really easily. So this is what we're seeing is roots basically growing through the soil and spreading out through the soil under the soil. Now, this is an important thing to understand because one of my, you know, my early thoughts about uh, fiber mats was, well, why are fiber mats not an inch thick or an inch and a half thick? And so the roots can kind of work their way through the soil like they would, but it's not actually what roots do. So I'm assuming what I'm going to see when I lift this up here is that there's going to be this, you know, the, the mat, the, the roots going down and spreading out. 
And I'm also wondering, again, how these roots are going to react to these air holes in here or the drainage holes in here. So this is something that's going to be interesting. So I am going to water this first before lifting it up. This soil is fairly moist. It's fine. Um, but this one, because it is a little dry around the edges, even though things are looking good, um, I think I'm going to get a much better... Um, um, I, I'll lift it up much cleaner by having it wet. So. so this is our first watering after germination. Okay. So I'm going to give that a second, but what I'm going to do while this is going is we're going to lift up our tray and see if we see some root, root growth coming through our drainage holes. And we see a lot of root growth coming through our drainage holes. So as this crop grows, we're going to see more and more of that. Now let's take a look here. See, at this point, and this is a fully mature tray, just making sure you can see that, sorry. Um, there is no root growth coming through there. Now, this varies with different uh, wheatgrass and other crops that I grow. Sometimes it grows through, sometimes it doesn't. But at this stage, uh, at this early stage here, I would never see root, root growth going through the bottom, or very rarely. So we're seeing already that this is going to be a characteristic, uh, at least of the paper pot tray. It may not do this in the 1020 trays, but our 1020 tray crop is the sunflower. So, um, you know, the roots are going down here to look for the water. So while we talked about the soil, the roots going through the soil and spreading out at the bottom of the soil, what the roots here are doing are going through the fiber mat and through the paper pot tray and then spreading out. So I'm thinking all sorts of things here that I haven't quite processed yet. Number one is, is what root, root growth is going to look like. At this point, this isn't like this is just the thing that's anchoring the seed to the tray, right? It's not even the growing medium anymore, really. Not even sure how to comprehend this yet, but I'll get to that. Um, the other thing is, if I'm thinking about this on both a commercial and home scale, but mostly on a commercial scale, this is a pain in the ass to clean. Now, I know some of you might be like, oh, you just go through, you scrape that off, there's a system for it. That scraping is another step. Now, if I can just pull this off, spray this down, or wipe really, really quickly with a sponge or something, or a, or a scrubby, and that comes off and spray it down, sanitize, I'm done, that's pretty quick. And any time you have content that you need to scrape off, um, it, it more than doubles the time it takes you to clean your trays. So as an example, if you let uh, sunflower shoots dry out too much during the growing process, which you might want to do for various reasons, it makes the trays a lot harder to clean because the sunflower roots really stick to the tray. Whereas if the, if the tray stays fully hydrated the whole time, you pull the, the sunflower mat of soil out and the tray is basically spotless. You spray it out to get some of the soil, you sanitize it and you're done. So these things have an effect at other points in your production cycle. And, you know, cleaning trays takes time. And if you're doing hundreds or thousands of trays um, in production a month, then your, your tray cleaning time is a, is, a, is a labor factor. So I am not going to lift this up because all I'm going to do, well, maybe I'll lift a little bit. But because the roots are going through, you know, this is not a separate entity. Like this, this fiber mat and these seeds and this tray are now one single entity. So let's just see. Yeah, see, as soon as I start pulling that up, it's like, okay, this was loose because it's a corner, but that's going to that's gonna be an issue. So now we're basically into our, uh, our light stage or our photosynthesizing stage. And this is going to be this tall in ideally three days, but I'm going to guess it's going to take about five. So, so far, and maybe this is just because of the position of the heating mat, this, this crop cycle um, might end up being, you know, if I go one, two, three, four, five days, 18, uh, this could end up being a nine day cycle instead of a seven day cycle. So I'm adding, I've added about two days to the cycle here with the mat so far. 
Again, I'm going to assume that that might be because of the, of the, the heating mat um, being under here and not transferring the heat up all the way. Now, as, um, as uh, I mentioned earlier, what I'll probably do for the germination stage is put the heating mat here. And then this is going to grow down uh, because the heat's going to come right up through there. And that should give us better results. Um, what it does mean is an, an added um, uh, hygienic component where I need to make sure my heating mat stays sanitary all the time because the roots are going to be in physical contact. Now the growing crop and the edible or juicing portion of the crop will not be in contact, but um, yeah, I want to keep things as sanitary as possible. So now this is going to go back into the, uh, into the growing um, uh, bench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the sunflower back here. I think the top tray is ready to harvest um, or it's ready enough to harvest so we can take a look at sunflower to see how it has responded to the tray growth as well. And here is our sunflower. So I've just taken it off the shelf. We'll take a look here. And uh, this actually is really, really nice germination. So whenever I'm looking at sunflower, I'm looking at uniformity. Um, I'm looking for the hulls, like are they actually losing hulls at this stage? And again, this is a, just like the wheatgrass, this is a little bit behind. Uh, sunflower is a heat loving crop and so it does really well in warm conditions. And so having that heating mat there is um, crucial. So that's going to be an important lesson is uh, having the heating mat, at least this time of year, directly under our growing tray um, and not under the, the bottom tray. Uh, it's, at, at this point, what I'm going to need to do when I when I when I uncover is actually remove that the the growing mat and stick it under the bottom tray, which means I'm going to lose the bottom heat for the growing portion, uh, and that's because I cannot have the uh, the the mat immersed in water. Uh, that is a hazard. So I'm going to think a little bit about some ways around that. Um, but uh, as it is now, uh, again, if the germination is good, the heating mat underneath will provide some extra heat, just not as much as we'd like. Let's take a look at root growth under here. So we don't have the sunflower growing under uh, through the mat quite as much as the wheatgrass. Uh, they do have different rooting habits and the wheatgrass is quite vigorous, but we're going to uh, watch how that goes because it is coming through and we are going to see uh, significantly more growth. So I'm going to give this a water. I'm going to take the bottom tray off of this one because I don't want to get it too, too wet. And then we're going to give this our watering. And I always do like a post germination watering with soil anyways. They've been growing for four days at this point without any water. And so this is just always a really nice refresher for the crop. And almost every crop I will do this with. Water there extra water comes through so I can feel the water weight in there. <coughs> um, so now the question, yeah, and I can still see like if I move things around, this water does like to come out, but not an issue. This is going to be on the tray and there we go. So here I can, st I can actually see the water like kind of pooling a little bit on the fiber mat. Um, so maybe that's a bit much, but I think it can hold more just weight wise after doing the trials, you know, that, that mat can hold more water but it should drain out and it's air, it's going to evaporate off that surface quite easily as well. So, um, so this one is ready to go back into growing as well. So I will be watching that uh, undergrowth and what we can do here, like I did with the wheatgrass. So this is my tray of sunflower that I'm going to harvest today. This one actually is a little bit wilted. So I watered it and I'll water, I'll harvest it later. So we'll first take a look at the bottom. So this is the mature one. So also like the wheatgrass and soil, this one doesn't have any roots coming through. Uh, and like the wheatgrass, sometimes it does, but usually it does not. Um, and then let's see if we can get this one up. This one's not quite as intensely rooted. So the, the sunflower, this sunflower actually doesn't have a super intense uh, root mass. It's often better than this, but you can see it's coming apart a little bit here. So it's not this, this mat I can, used as a frisbee in, in the in the um, wheatgrass but similar we see this big root mat on underneath here at the bottom make sure you're getting yeah so you can see that 
Um, so same thing, the roots are going down. We do see some, a little more vertical roots in here with the sunflower, but a bulk of the root down below. So again, the roots are going down and spreading when they hit that barrier. So this will get harvested. Now, here's a, here's a good example of uh, overlap, which is a little unrelated to the trial, but this isn't quite ready to harvest, but the other tray needs to go in the light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on the kitchen table or put it in a windowsill. Uh, within a few hours, these will recover from, um, from the wilting, not a problem. I'm not concerned about that at all. And then I can harvest those and bag them up afterwards. So the thing with a cycle like this is it is very flexible. And I actually do have another shelf on, uh, available on my shelving unit there that I could put them on. So, so there we go. So we've uncovered our sunflower and pea, or sunflower and wheatgrass. Let's just do this like this. So there we go. We've got our trays now germinated and uncovered. And at this point in our fiber mat versus soil um, trial, we're, we're, we're getting pretty good results. Now, you can see I don't have any soil here, so it's not a, we're not looking uh, directly at the same time. And that's mostly because it's inconvenient for me. What would be really nice is to have them growing side by side so we can see the growth, and I will do that. Um, but uh, I don't want two trays of sunflower or two trays of wheatgrass at a time. It's more than I can uh, process at home. So I'm doing this trial um, within the context of a home grower at the moment. But I've grown enough of these trays and I know what they look like to get a sense of what is this gonna look like. And when I do the harvest, I can weigh the yield so I can get a yield comparison in that regard. Overall, I'm really happy with germination on both. I didn't see any major drying out of the fiber mat. And so now it's going to be a, a twice a day observation on my part to look at like, how are things growing? Is this fairly rapid growth? Are we seeing uh, any drying out? Like I, I just need to learn how to sort of look at this. When I'm growing in soil, I don't think about it. I, I barely even look at them. I water them once a day or every other day. Um, clearly I wasn't on top of my sunflower, which was a little wilty, but I know that's basically inconsequential. So, so I, can, I can be really lax with managing them and still get a very, very good product. The fiber mat, I just don't know if I can do that yet. So um, I, I do think from the uh, getting to know uh, the mat and its water holding properties that it is gonna hold water really, really well. So now it's a matter of uh, how quickly the, the crop absorbs the water and transpires it and we lose water that way. Uh, how much water we lose from excess draining out the bottom, which will be minimal to none actually. Um, and then how much we're losing to surface evaporation. And there is pretty good coverage from the seed on these, but there's also a, a good amount of exposure. So what I'm expecting is a once a day watering, fairly consistent but slow growth, and a longer crop cycle. So I can shorten the crop cycle by putting the uh, heating mat directly under the, the growing tray for the germination cycle. Uh, so that's gonna give us probably a day less of germination. But when it comes to this step, when I shift the uh, heating mat back under this, um, the bottom tray uh, to avoid immersing it in water or getting it too wet, which may not be an issue because I don't need to uh, fill these uh, trays to water them. I tend to water from above anyways. And so this might pushing me towards watering above more often. And so the, the heating mats will get a little wet, but they won't be immersed in water. Ideally, I do want to avoid them in water. They are e electrical things. Um, but they're also well insulated. So I'm gonna play with that, but my tendency is to avoid them being in a place where there's gonna be, uh, or potentially be excess amounts of water. So there we go. So, so far fiber mats are performing fairly well, uh, and any slowness in growth may be because of the growing method, not because of the fiber mat. What I'm not seeing is anything that suggests the fiber mat is not doing what it's supposed to do. So we're off to a really good start. I'm very excited about this. It is October 13th, so we are now, this is the beginning of our fifth day of growth. We've had four full days, and I'm expecting four or five more days of, of growth after this. So let's see how they uh, go, and I'll, we'll tune in for the next video when I'm ready to do it.